Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite person in the community that Windows guys just complain about, Gardner, the Linux gamer. Ugh, I'm sick. I'm sick. I've got, I don't know what it is. I got a cold or, or maybe the flu. I have no idea. But that's not going to stop me from making an awesome video. <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about Nextcloud because uh, in the world of of, of computing and video games, the world that I love, that I exist in, there are like four things that I geek out super duper hard about. And in chronological order, it would be video games, Star Trek, Linux, and Nextcloud. Those are the things that I have obsessed over uh, since, well, since whenever, I mean, since I started obsessing over them. Nextcloud has become a, a, a real uh, obsession of mine. And uh, so I just wanted to talk about the five reasons that I love Nextcloud. So let's just, uh, let's just tackle this list, shall we? Number five, it's open source. If you're someone that watches this channel regularly, then it might not, it might seem like a moot point for me to, to mention, but uh, you know, because of course I'm going to use open source software. That's like my bread and butter, right? But let's not forget that the majority of you watching right now are not watching on Linux. You're watching on Windows. You're watching on Mac. You're watching on a PlayStation or an Xbox or on your phone, right? And so I can't take it for granted that uh, espousing the virtues of open source would be preaching to the choir. So if you're watching the show, you might not uh, understand why I love open source software so much. Free and open source software preserves your rights and freedoms to use, modify, and redistribute the software that you love and rely on. Nextcloud is primarily written in PHP and JavaScript, and as a web developer, as a, as a JavaScript and a PHP coder, that freedom is invaluable to me, right? But even if you're not a coder, there are so many other reasons for free software uh, to use free software, uh, not the least of which is the security that it provides. I believe that a well-maintained free and open source project uh, with a large development community is just inherently more secure than a proprietary alternative. And I can't say that for all open source projects. You know, if there's a small project that has one or two developers, but with a large code base, there's no guarantee that, you know, code audits happen uh, and or that, uh, you know, new features aren't haven't been scrutinized by a lot of people. But with all that being said, I would trust free and open source software, even ones that don't have a huge development community, more than I would trust a, a closed source offering. Uh, for me, free and open source software is all about trust. I trust that the developers uh, are building something because they love it, not because they want to uh, collect my data and sell it to the lowest bidder. <laughs> or the highest bidder, I guess, whatever. But I also trust that security updates are deployed regularly and done in good faith. I trust that new features are, are gonna have been uh, audited, had tens if not hundreds of eyeballs uh, scouring the code to for issues before release. And I trust that uh, if I find an issue, I can get a copy of the source code. I can go in and try and fix it. I can submit my fix back to the development team. And usually, if the development team is worth their salt, they'll, they'll accept it. And that's really awesome. Number four, the app ecosystem. So the app ecosystem is robust. Uh, it's powerful and it provides a ton of extra functionality in Nextcloud. In fact, the API is so powerful that it's used by Nextcloud's developers to provide more, uh, to provide many of the features that Nextcloud includes out of the box. For example, things like two-factor authentication, uh, brute force protection, file sharing, and many other of the core features, they come as apps. It's really cool because that speaks to the power and the versatility of the app API, but it also gives you more control over the type of uh, Nextcloud instance you want to run. Do you want to disable file sharing completely? Just disable the app and then it's not part of Nextcloud anymore. Same for federated cloud connections or theming or logs or accessibility features. I think all the apps that come out of the box can be disabled and you uh, can run your Nextcloud instance the way you want to run it. 
but it also allows you to add more apps, uh, third-party apps, apps from Nextcloud that don't come uh, standard. And you know, I've added several uh, really useful apps to my Nextcloud instance, including a password manager. So what the password manager does, this is really cool, it goes online and it checks to see if any of your passwords uh, have been compromised and it notifies you. It also will generate uh, secure passwords for you. You can customize how you want the password generating to, to work. Um, it's really, really cool. And, and most of the time it works on just about every website. Some websites that log in over XHR might not work with the browser extension, but most websites that use like standard post requests to log in, it works great. And it's it's fantastic. Uh, I also have downloaded a calendar app that allows me to manage appointments and stuff. It's basically a drop-in replacement for Google Calendar. Um, I have a contacts app that backs up my, my phone's um, contacts on a daily basis. I have Nextcloud Talk, which is a decentralized web RTC voice, video, and uh, text chat application. There's also a, an app on the phone. You can also get collaborative document editing uh, software like only office or Calabra and it works pretty much just like Google Drive or Office 365 and that's really cool because Nextcloud allows you to cut out a lot of proprietary stuff uh, right out of your life you don't need Google anymore if you have Nextcloud number three the support so much like the app ecosystem the community and support for Nextcloud is incredibly strong. Gnome, my preferred desktop environment, has built-in support for Nextcloud, uh, integrating CardDAV, CalDAV, and WebDAV support right into the desktop environment. That's super cool. You add your uh, you add your Nextcloud login to your online accounts in 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 Gnome, and it will it'll set up the WebDAV uh, share in Nautilus. It'll integrate with uh, the Contacts app, the Calendar app and all that stuff. It's so cool and so useful and, and so easy. It makes like, it just makes everything in your life super, super simple. Uh, it, it also receives regular updates at least once a month and introduces new features, security updates, and, and a ton more. Uh, so I got to knock on wood for this one, but, uh, I haven't had a single issue upgrading to the latest version of Nextcloud since I started using it. And I think that that's fantastic and it shows that the community really knows what they're doing and, and they just kick ass. Number two, Nextcloud works like the cloud you've come to rely on. If you have an iPhone or Android phone, you can download uh, a litany of Next Nextcloud apps that allow you to interact with your personal cloud. Uh, these apps work pretty much like iCloud or Google Drive. You, you can set up the Nextcloud app to automatically back up your photos that you take on your phone, which is super useful. I use it all the time at work. I have to take lots of photos at my day job, do some Photoshopping on them, and then upload them to our website. And... You know, Nextcloud just makes it super simple. I, I take a photo with my phone. I, I, I don't have to do anything else. I just take the photo and then I go sit down at my desk, go to the file, uh, go to the folder where it's set up to synchronize and just copy it over. And it, it's super easy. You know, I don't have to find a cable to plug my phone in uh, or to sync the files. It's just, it's super simple. Um, I, I, I love that, you know, you've, you come to rely on these services. I was, before I had Nextcloud, my photos were being uploaded to Google photo and it's like, I don't trust Google photo. It's like, oh, I see that in this picture there, there's a, a picture of your dog, Larry, and there, there's your, your, uh, there's a sofa in this picture. And it's like, Google, stop doing that kind of stuff. I don't want you to look at my photos and analyze them. It is convenient when when Google will automatically like recognize faces, but you can actually get a, a facial recognition app that runs on your server locally, and that doesn't require uh, you know, the use of uh, like a Google API or anything like that. It's it's all done locally, and so I've th I've considered I've toyed around with that app a little bit. It's pretty sweet. And finally, number one, Nextcloud is self-hosted and self-empowering. So as someone who does web development and server administration for my day job, I found it incredibly simple to deploy Nextcloud on a spare PC that I just had laying around. If you've ever had the opportunity to mess around with server configurations, you'll know exactly what to do here. It's pretty straightforward. If you haven't though, Nextcloud might be a relatively simple project to get your feet wet. You don't even have to have like a server edition of Linux 
uh, in order to 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 run Nextcloud. Um, the the biggest difference between a server version of of Ubuntu and the regular Ubuntu is that the server version doesn't come with a graphical interface. It's just command line. So what's really cool is if I wanted to, I could have installed a regular desktop edition of Ubuntu 18.10 on my server back here, and uh, I would have been able to download all the dependencies you need for Nextcloud, uh, just like you would through a regular package manager, and then configure either Nginx or Apache. Uh, or you can run Docker, but that's a whole other <laughs> can of worms right there. Uh, so just configure Nginx or Apache, uh, point the uh, server configuration to the place where you have all the Nextcloud files, and uh, make sure that you run the, the setup wizard in your browser after you got your web server set up, and you're good to go. I mean, it's that simple. It's that straightforward. You know, if you want to get a little more uh, complex, you can add, you know... Uh, TLS uh, encryption stuff like that, but but yeah, I mean, it, it, even even doing a TLS thanks to Let's Encrypt is so simple now. It's so simple, so easy, so straightforward. The fact is, running a Nextcloud server means that I own my data. It means that I'm controlling how and where it's being stored, and it's a, such a rewarding and fulfilling experience. I am my own data steward. I'm responsible for its protection and for the security of my server. And that's just a fantastic feeling. I wanna know what you think. Are you running a Nextcloud instance? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what apps you have installed in your Nextcloud instance. Uh, yeah, are you running the, the the federated social server that now integrates with uh, Mastodon and stuff? Let me know, that's pretty sweet. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.